But the only question I get is, how many wires can you put in a terminal? Not this many. But don't you laugh, because I know you've done it before. And the answer is not black and white. And that's where the issue comes in when you ask me that. We have to look into the specifications for the particular device. Many devices only allow you to put one wire under a terminal. But that is not a hard rule. So, in fact, this device does not allow this many, but it does allow two. Now, let's talk about how we end up in this situation. In this case, I need to take L1 from my disconnect and connect it to a fuse holder here, 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 and here. And breaker is right here. But just so we can see, this is what we end up with, is you shove a bunch of wires under here, and that does not work. Now, there are five ways that we can get by this. First, we do have the jumpers that we can put across our fuse holders or circuit breakers. Now, as we discussed in our SCCR video, the issue with this is this is only good for 10 kiloamps. So that's going to lower the interrupt rating of our panel. So for me, this one is out. We can get a distribution block. This is a one pole. They do make three poles like this. And this lets us bring power in from our main breaker. And this one's going to give us four spots to connect. So this would work for our application. Again, we need one that has an SCCR rating because this, if it is not labeled with a higher SCCR rating, is also only good for 10 kiloamps. This one does say 100 kiloamps on the side of it, so it would be an okay solution. It does take up more space. In the case of our Siemens 3VA6 breaker, there may not be a breaker out there that has more accessories. And yes, that doesn't include this block which we can put underneath our breaker lug, and that's going to give us six spots. Takes up a little bit more space, but not nearly as much as the wire duct. And also, this is considered part of that breaker, so it will maintain the interrupt rating of the breaker. Now, this one surprises a lot of people. This is a double ferrule. And per UL, if we take a ferrule, and we use a proved crimping device, this becomes one connection, and this will give you two wires under one lug, and this is perfectly legit per UL. And finally, this fuse holder, like many fuse holders, when you get looking at the specifications, sometimes has a multiple conductor allowance. For one wire, this one has a maximum cross sectional area or wire size of. 10 millimeter squared or 8 AWG. But notice it has a two wire allowance also. And in that case, its maximum cross sectional area for a stranded wire is 8 AWG. And if we're going to use two wires and the total is 10 millimeter squared, that means each wire can be 5 millimeter squared. And if we look at a millimeter squared to AWG table, then 5AWG doesn't actually exist, so we'll have to go to the next smallest one, and that's going to be 12AWG. So while we can't do this with this one, we can put two 12AWGs in here. Now, this panel design, coincidentally, does call for a 12AWG main power. So I will take 12AWG from my main breaker, and then I will jumper it to each one of these. So there's five different ways that we can get multiple wires into one terminal. And now let's see if we can get this panel wired up. 